Okay. Two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's recording now then. All right. So yeah, thanks very much for um, joining everybody. Um, and finding the time um, to do so. Um, so I'll just start. Um, I'm aware of a couple of people in, in this call um, having been your area managers. Um, but um, uh, just to kind of give give a bit of an introduction um, about myself. So I started as an auditor um, back in April 2014. Um, on my 18th birthday, I was one of the keen ones that applied on the day, and, um, and I couldn't do all that much um, uh, where I was, um, just because of kind of transport lim limits and things like that. Um, but so legal um, really gave me um, an opportunity, even though I couldn't, couldn't do loads for them, it gave me an opportunity to do some kind of work um, because I was in a bit of a difficult situation where um, I had caring responsibilities. So I couldn't have taken on like a normal job like a lot of my friends did, where they might have been working in a shop or working in a pub because I just couldn't commit to those shifts. Um, <clears throat> but for me, like from from the off, like so legal really gave me um, an opportunity to um, do something different sorry I'm just I realized that um Emily's not been able to join back in <laughs> so I'm just starting her back in um yeah so I was um uh I was doing that back back home and then went to uni um down in Bath um that that at the end of that summer um and I remember one of the kind of key key things for me when I realized how how much I like to serve legal was I was on the train down um to uni for the from first Kind of for freshers week uh, of all my things and um i got a phone call off uh, seth for those of you who know might know um seth um asking if i could do a home delivery audit to my new university address because they needed somebody in bath and hadn't had anybody and what i like 60 pounds of free shopping uh providing some of it was alcohol and that was um given that i wasn't able to do all that much work when i actually got to bath because for those of you who know public transport in Bath isn't isn't great um by any means um but uh, yeah I kind of you know already started to see those benefits um of what I'd be able to do um um even even if I couldn't take on that much um alongside university um uh, however that being said you know it did still give me the opportunity to earn a bit of money um alongside uni and um uh, the things that I, I like to think that I did at that time was uh, be able to get more involved with sports teams um, at university, get involved with the SU, uh, set up a Northern Society, um, which Bath de desperately needed, and um, you know, I, and, and I was able to, to kind of really make the most alongside, obviously, doing a bit of studying and things like that. Um, so um, then, when it came to the end of university, and I started looking for for grad jobs. Um, I was a little bit worried because I thought, well, you know, I don't have any work experience. Um, all I've done is work for Serve Legal. Um, and is that really going to impress anybody? But actually what I found was um, I, I really underestimated how much I could make from having done a casual job. Like I thought the only thing that um, employers would be interested in hearing about is formal jobs um, where people have had to kind of go in and do shifts and show that they've, they've been able to do that. But actually, um, I think the way that I sold the the role on my CV. Well, it definitely isn't perfect, and I'll read you out exactly how I I kind of described it. Um, it, you know, I think it, I I underestimated how much it actually probably did um contribute um and uh, give me talking points. So um I described it as oh well the skills were observance and proficiency at providing detailed levels of description via written communication forms. Uh, logistical planning and time management due to self-navigating in unfamiliar areas, often having several different visits within one time frame or without a car. By no means saying to, that you should copy that um, if you're, you're rewording your CVs at the minute. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I don't think, um, I tried to jazz it up with a lot of fancy language to make it sound better than it actually was. Um, but actually, I think I underestimated that on its in itself, like the, those are actual genuine skills. Um, and kind of a big thing for me is that one one thing that I probably underestimated is that when you're doing a casual job rather than a shift job that again, like you know, friends and things are doing, um, you're choosing to work every time you every time you do anything, and that's that actually reflects more so on your work ethic. Um, providing you sell it in the right way, you can you know you can justify that you've actually chosen to do every bit of work. Um, my first boss um, when when I left uni and went into a grad job in recruitment, um, he referred in my first couple of months at some point he referred to um, 
something about mystery shopping and was like, oh, Helen, you'll know something about that. And I couldn't remember when I must have, when we must have discussed that. And he said, um, it was from, it, he remembered me talking about it in my job interview. Um, and then, then that made me remember. And I'd actually used it as an example of when I um, got a phone, phone call from my area manager, as I'm sure you all have on a Saturday evening at like 6 p.m. Um, saying, um, Helen, could you get to um, this pub in, in Burnley? Um, I was Salford, part of Manchester, for those who know, that's quite a fair distance. Uh, any chance you could get to Burnley for this ID audit? I was like, oh, you're right, yeah, okay. And so I got my mum to drive me and made this trip out of it and stuff. And um, and I used that to demonstrate commitment and reliability and um, willingness to think on my feet. And, you know, clearly my boss, having interviewed probably lots of undergrads that same months and, you know, within that same period of time, he'd remembered that. And I think part of it was, I do remember him asking me a bit more about it at the time. And, like, he, uh, you know, it was a different job. It was something that, not everybody else had done um and uh you know when you're trawling through a load of cvs and interviewing a lot of people having something a bit distinctive can can really be a benefit and um yeah i definitely overlooked that and um kind of just wanted to firstly make the point of um yeah can you know do make sure that that you're um uh, kind of not underselling it uh when when you are um applying for jobs whether that's now or in a couple of years time or anything like that um, and we'll come back to that um, in some of the questions um, <clears throat> just shortly. But um, kind of first question that I want to like put out to the floor um, is: um, Did anybody have any, uh, or do you have now, any other casual jobs uh, where you're not doing kind of set shifts? And kind of what do those involve? Like, it'd be good to know how those can compare to sort of legal. Just chime in whenever. <laughs> Does that apply to anybody? I don't mind like a short bit about mine because mine's quite similar. I book on and off when I want to go on um, duty. Um, there's a volunteer police officer. I don't know if anyone else knew because um, I'm not full time yet. And that very similar to sort of legal, you need to take the sort of initiative of getting the work agreed, finding a supervisor to sort of like work under for that shift, depending where you're working to quite similar different areas mm -hmm. i have different supervisors pretty much like serve legal and then, yeah it's, it's very similar with taking the initiative like you mentioned it's you like demonstrating that work ethic that you actually want to go out and and do it mm. do you think there's anything that um so legal could could learn from the kind of their setup of, of doing it in comparison to, to kind of how we do i think it's much more efficient the way serve legal do it because they normally uh, approach you with work like we need i don't know say a batch of visits done in this postcode whereas for me it's much more i'm coming in this day um have we got a car i can book have we got this yeah. and, that? and it's much more confusing so i i think the the serve legal setup in that term is quite good but i do think and i know people raised it so many times before but if there was a map I think you've already heard this one that you can like see visits and pull visits off or you can book a batch of visits in a certain area. It might be a bit more efficient and sort of take up that middleman work for like area managers. Yeah, for sure. I think um, I, I've said this in, in the last couple, so I'm going to give the same amount away, but I can't really give too much. But, but there are actually some quite considerable um, developments uh, in the pipeline. So um should be happening in the quite near future so um yeah there, there, are, there is news on that um, shortly to come because stay, stay up to date um there, there'll be announcements um but yeah no good good feedback and um you know um you know kind of surprised to be honest that, <laughs> that you found sort of legal way better uh, or more efficient in, in some ways so um you know that's that's um yeah definitely definitely pleasing to hear and um yeah but I, I do think you're right that we could could definitely work on making that that more so uh with with some fairly maybe seems obvious <laughs> kind of kind of changes as well and um, what about anybody else has anybody done any other kind of casual jobs or kind of um have, have you had any experience doing kind of more shift type jobs and how have you found kind of doing doing that alongside serve legal um me, me personally i've like mainly done like set shifts for my work mm -hmm. i worked um at home i worked for like an agency a recruitment agency where like i like Specialised mainly in like being a waiter or a bartender at like events and weddings and whatnot. Um, and then I also did have a job at uni being a bartender, 
um, just for like uh, things like beer colour for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then recently over COVID, uh, I was working mainly like warehouse work. So um, I've primarily done sort of like, yeah, set shifts every week. So working for third legal has been a lot different. I've like just been able to kind of have a time window of just being able to pick and choose when you can kind of start the audits, um, which I think it's good and bad either way. Like I think it's quite good to have set shifts because you kind of know exactly when you are working and mm -hmm. in that time for the day. But then being able to do it casually can be quite helpful if something like like if something like that, an emergency comes up or something like that, and uh, you can kind of work around it pretty well. So I quite I do quite like that like that aspect of just being able to kind of do it with, when it suits you really. Yeah, for sure. With um with the recruitment agency type um piece, I think I've heard some like other auditors can talk about about doing similar things, but I, I might be uh kind of linking it wrong um is that the type of thing where where you still kind of pick which day yeah. which shift you want to take on so it's casual in some nature yeah actually, yeah to be fair when you put it like that yeah that is true like, i haven't got like um so i won't get like the, a road to a search like mm -hmm. a week before i can kind of tell them the days i'm available and they'll be able to work around like put me on for like a shift on like do like a wedding on a saturday or if there's like an event on like on a thursday night then and it's it's it is actually quite casual to be fair like compared to like other places like mm. I had to work at like beer color where it was like okay you're working Thursday night Friday night Saturday night so yeah it is quite similar actually okay what do you find um this, this is always something that I find quite interesting what do you find easier to say no to if someone was to say oh is there any chance you could help us out with at this event like we're short on numbers or if your area manager said oh is there any chance you could help me out with this batch of visits um to be fair like I'm Wait, were you saying which one's better, like, to what? Which I, I would say, like, kind of harder to say no to. Oh, um, probably hard to say no to would actually probably be, like, serve legal, because I guess I haven't been, I've worked for that agency a lot longer than I have with um, serve legal, um, so I'm kind of, um, the agency I work for, they can easily replace me, or, like, they've got plenty of people who they can, like, call upon, whereas if you need somebody in that local area and, like, I'm the only person who can really do that then I feel like I have to do kind of step up and do that for the local area like do them all to see so probably yeah probably serve legal to be fair. Uh, I'm trying not to smile too much and, and uh, <laughs> 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 that's it. <laughs> um, yeah I mean you know obviously I think um, one thing to, to bear in mind is uh, not necessarily relevant to this topic but relevant to, to what we just discussed is like please do be aware that every single time you say yes um, to an area manager who's begging you to go and do something, it's massively, massively appreciated. Um, and uh, uh, and yeah, so I do hope that, that they're always um, kind of relaying that back. Um, it can, can be uh, something that we forget to do sometimes. Um, anybody else, uh, other kind of jobs that they kind of have anything to say about kind of comparing to the experience with Serve Legal? Eloise? Yeah, um, I do bar shifts, mm. both at home and at uni, but they are like completely different. One's a lot like serve legal and one is like just like normal job because um, the one at home is like I get a rotor every week. They tell me when I'm working and it's that kind of thing. But then at uni, I will, there would be a list of times and I'll just choose whatever shifts I want. They uh. make you, they don't tell you which ones to go for so you just pick whatever you want whatever day um and then you can just pick them up or last minute or um and all of so that's a bit like surf league where you just choose exactly mm -hmm. to work which of the bar jobs do you prefer which way of managing that do you prefer um i think it's probably better for each place because at uni i'd rather choose when i want to work but then if it's just at home, then I, and it's in the summer holidays, then I probably would just, wouldn't mind the rotor. But it is quite annoying when they put you on certain days when you know that you don't want to work those yeah. days, those hours. So I think, yeah, the picking the shift is quite good. I quite like that. Mm. Yeah, and again, you know, um, whenever I was, when I was saying before about kind of making casual work look good and my only example really to use was, was serve legal I did actually do a bit of a, a, another casual job but um uh yeah it was 
you know, that is kind of a general point. You know, I'd say the same thing about about the bar work. Like, you know, any employer would appreciate that, you know, you're willing to kind of take on on shifts when I'm sure there's other things that you might want to do that Friday night, but you, you know, do the, the kind of... Um, yeah, valuable thing of of going out and, and earning some money instead. So you know that 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 kind of messed you about work ethic. Um, you could definitely get across. And you know, I think ultimately, by the way, you know, there's definitely there's definitely never to say that having a part time like shift job where where it's set shifts it is anything wrong. Like it's just that I think there's a preconception that that's always better. Um, and actually, it's it's more about kind of showing that there can be advantages definitely of, of both. Um, and it either can be spun around to, to really impress an employer. Um, so unless there was anything else to say on, on kind of jobs and things, um, I'll go on to um, just a quick bit about um, what else um, could I imagine from knowing you guys, uh, I think, all of you were at uni, uh, at least at some point, uh, if you're not anymore. Um, but um, uh, yeah, what else have you found that you've been able to kind of make time for that you think you possibly wouldn't have been able to had you been um, kind of having to do a set shift job? Um, and for, for those of you who were ACs, so um, those that don't know, um, Gabe and Emily um, are, have worked on our AC team. So um, the kind of team that work at the weekend approving reports and things um if you could maybe say say a bit about how you found it kind of at that level as well that'd be really good and um, like personally for me I found working like as an auditor really good because I could sometimes incorporate um the casual work of like doing audits into my social life so especially for, like the pub visits and bar visits I did used to bring people along because you are allowed technically um, <laughs> you like you'd make it more fun and you'd get your expenses covered then also just in terms of um the ac work i suppose like again like section off when you want to work which made it quite flexible in terms of if you had uni assignments i could just block off certain days mm-hmm. which i'm really beneficial so like even though i was contracted x amount of hours i was still able to like do those hours to suit my needs and like that kind of thing if that makes sense and it mm-hmm. wasn't that it wasn't like a whip telling me to work this day and for this long. It was a lot more suited to my needs, which I really appreciated. Mm. Nice one. Um, Gabe, I imagine for you, is there any benefits with your course being kind of involved in some like volunteering, uh, both as an auditor and as they um, kind of reflect on, on being an AC as well? But w- w- did that allow you to kind of get more involved in any way? Or? I think a lot of the time management time management stuff you learn is very important but I think with the approving especially because as long as you keep on your 24-hour rule it's sort of up to you what you do so I've sat and approved say 9 till 11 then been able to fit in actually doing all from say like 12 till 5 mm-hmm. and I come back and do the rest of the reports in the evening and that's like it's so beneficial for money as what well, like mm-hmm. at the end of the day but I think just in terms of like learning your time management like learning I mean it's so good to keep them like reports fresh in your head at the time you're approving them because I'm, I'm sure the briefings have changed now like loads since I've even turned 20 mm-hmm. and that was so helpful at the time and just making time then for like other weekend commitments if I wasn't sort of auditing in the middle of the day I'd have time then to go and like join sports or go to the gym um and before I was even doing the AC sort of team just auditing wise I could do it after college I don't know if it's different for anyone else but Wednesday afternoons are normally like protected by a lot of uni college timetables for sports and sort of like extra activities and if there wasn't a lot happening if it was like a miserable day you could normally just pick up a set of audits and then that's like 50 pound in quite like a convenient afternoon say that you've made um and I think that flexibility is just like so helpful and then so you for some reason you couldn't do it on your Wednesday afternoon you just pick them up on a Saturday or something instead as long as it was by the deadline and so it really like it's sort of like the closest thing to being self-employed I guess <laughs> when you think about it because it's totally like up to you mm. nice good stuff um what about um uh the rest of you guys so like is there anything that you've been able to to kind of join like groups that you've been able to join or, or kind of um projects that you've been able to do that kind of possibly friends that you've known that have got kind of more set shifts and things haven't been able to do um I think for me like I've been able to uh, actually 
balance. I think I've been able to balance it a lot easier, yeah, for sure. Like, because I'm like quite into, I like to play rugby. So, like, having, you know, to quit whilst also having this on the side has been quite nice for me as I've not had to like miss out on much. Um, like, social, the social aspect, the natural playing aspect. So, I, I mm. thought that's quite nice because there's quite been a few people I know who have had to either commit to one or the other with regards to like work or if they want to like do like a hobby outside. So, I think. Uh, yeah, that's that's quite a nice sort of luxury that I've had. Um, mm. I quite enjoyed that that side of it. Good. Yeah, I think um, you know uh, I felt the value of that myself so much when when I was a uh, an old so kind of in my, my first year of uni, kind of thinking now about like the experience that you know not, I'm showing you, but you've um, you know heard enough sympathy. But like you know how how the the situation is for students this year, like the last thing that you're going to want in semester two when hopefully kind of you get a bit more freedom back is is to be having to work so oh sorry did I cut off for a minute there it cut off for me anyway um yeah um it is is having to work and you know I think um one thing that I uh, picked up from from the call like this that I did yesterday was actually kind of the you know the mental health benefits as well like you know student mental health is such a big big um issue at the minute um kind of this year more, more than ever probably and you know having the pressure of shift uh, you know set shifts um is just going to make that make that so much worse when uh, especially if that means having to cancel things that you kind of really want to do and particularly if those are things that you've not been able to do for other reasons for, um over the semester so um yeah kind of that, that's definitely one reason why we're trying to kind of um, do a big big recruitment push at, at the minute particularly in, in unis is to, to kind of hopefully give that that um opportunity to to more people um is there anything else on on that kind of theme or I think, like you say, it's it's helpful, especially with the COVID thing, because through a lot of the lockdowns and the rules, they've let you go out to work if you can't work from home. And I know, like, people are still doing ID, like, 18, 19-year-old audits in Swansea and Cardiff. Mm. And they've loved, like, having, I say, like, an excuse, but it is a it is like a reason to actually just go out and about and see stuff and just see a bit of the world at the moment. Yeah, I remember speaking to one auditor um, when it was kind of lockdown one and I, I kind of ended up running Wales a bit as well as kind of south and stuff and um then I remember speaking to one guy who he like he was in London and then he'd ended up going on to be like a family like holiday home or something in in Wales and like and it was when they had tighter things about not being able to go for more than like five miles and I remember, I remember briefing him and being saying well does this mean that I can go for more than five miles and and he was just it sounds really bad but he was so relieved that he could like get away from his family for, for a day he's like i'm so bored of them <laughs> get me out <laughs> and uh you know so i think i i hadn't really appreciated that, that yeah definitely kind of this year and yeah i remember in in my first year that having kind of just spending all the time with with my house kind of almost did get a bit overwhelming at times and this was in in normal times as well so um you know kind of I think this year um kind of that opportunity you know I'd, I'd like like to think anyway that that people kind of see that as as being a, a benefit and I hope it has has kind of made people people's lives a little bit easier um so obviously I talked about kind of how I'd use Serve Legal in um, in a job interview and on my, my CV and things. Um, for any of you guys, particularly if you've been started applying for um, grad level jobs or kind of work placements, kind of placements for uni or anything, um, I'd be interested to know how, how have you kind of sold Serve Legal um, either in, in interviews or on your CV um, or, or kind of just just generally when like networking or, or anything that you might have been doing how how do you kind of you describe it and have you had any interest in like reactions to it at all i think like i you have to excuse me i don't i know there's serve legal values but i don't know them off the top of my head but oh. I know for, for policing there's like important values that they assess you on through sort of like the assessment process and i imagine it's the same for a lot of jobs they want to values and I found like the like honesty and integrity side of it was really important because you've got to get your reports right. You could get somebody sacked if you lied on a report or you're like you could get in trouble yourself if you just made up your timings or something in a bookmakers. And it was like having that attention to detail, like being honest and like stuff like even if you didn't want to give a fail letter, just doing it because you knew it was like the process and the right thing to do at the end of the day. And you could sort of 
because one of the things they say at like 18 19 when you go for a job is like come back and get some more life experience when can you prove you've been like honest when can you prove you've and they even like say you've, a time you've dealt with conflict when like someone's not taken kindly to being told the result in order <laughs> and um there's like a chance you can actually say i'm 19 but i've done i can prove i'm honest i can prove i've got like integrity i can prove i've like dealt with a conflict sometime or even and they say you come across a car crash when you're just driving to an order and you've got to deal with it. It, I'm, it happens to everyone at some point in the two years, I'm sure, just something wacky like that. And you get so much life experience it, in a very short amount of time. And I think employers generally love like to hear about that. Yeah, and absolutely, you know, um, yeah, I think having having those examples um, I'm sure for anyone who has um, had a job interview um, so far and, and kind of I, I can tell you like from experience of, of many failed grad job interviews like they, <laughs> they like they love those example ones so yeah like you know having just kind of a backlog of right this is what I'm going to say for this one and this is what I'm going to say for this one Um yeah again like you know I I probably didn't use serve legal for as many examples of that than I probably could have done. But actually, maybe maybe if it was a work related one rather than kind of doing doing what everyone says, which is all the time when I worked in a group on project at uni, um, then you know, had it had it made more of of serve legal than yeah, I probably could have. Um, yeah, uh, really kind of had a more memorable answer as well um because again you know it is it is something that's that's a bit weird and people quite like to ask an extra question about and and it catches people's attention when you talk about it so um yeah for sure what about um has anybody else had any kind of experience of um uh, of using it on their cv or job applications anything yeah like personally recently i've like pimped out my um link on <laughs> with so many transferable skills from serve legal because the actual premise of it when you do tell people like oh you're basically a mystery shopper and you buy alcohol and cigarettes and see if you get id'd everyone just doesn't believe it because it doesn't sound like mm. a real job because it is it is class and um when you actually look into it there is so many skills like i would never have thought like at 17 i was at 18 going into a bookies and doing a bet and just like gaining so much confidence in that respect has just led to like my confidence in so many other areas mm. um i was going to say as well um, I feel like it's like a proper taste of like the real work because I never really realised until like maybe a year into being an auditor that the reports you do actually do have an impact, like they do actually have consequences, especially when um, you do have to tell someone they failed. I was like, oh God, I've actually got a proper job now. <laughs> like this is, this is quite serious. And I think I have like gained so many skills I just don't even realise and even just like talking to people when, they're, when they say about situations, like I got equally similar ones that have happened to me in serve legal so I think it's really benefited me personally and it's my only job I've ever had and um I think it's been great <laughs> Good stuff. um yeah no definitely I think um yeah like, it's interesting that you mentioned LinkedIn actually like you know um I don't know if you've uh obviously I post a lot on like the serve legal community group I, I actually kind of run all the social media pages as well for for serve legal now and um you know so if, if it was something that you wanted endorsing on a skill like uh, you know because one of the benefits I think for working for a slightly smaller company is um that you know you you can actually just ask somebody to do that and chances are it's quite quite easy to do so you know that that's um not something that I'd, I'd really thought about but I'll uh, can make try and try and think of some way that we can maybe um help uh auditors kind of give themselves a boost on there I don't know um I don't really remember getting that much encouragement at uni to kind of be on on LinkedIn, but I think that's kind of been much more recently that there's there's more and more um, uh, kind of encouragement to do so. And um, yeah, everything that I can see is it, it, you know it, it does kind of give people benefits. So um, yeah, could definitely something definitely something for me to think about. So thank you very much, Emily. Um, what about um, kind of any downsides um, that you've you've found like? This is, um, it can be like fairly technical bits, but um, uh, in terms of um, the kind of day to day, but also um, if it'd be really good to hear if anybody's got any ideas for how we could be more, I know, pro youth, um, I guess like this, uh, if you don't, um, if you're not aware, like the point of doing these forums was partly because it's Power of Youth Week. So uh, we want to kind of hear about how we can be as a 
workforce is under 25 and mostly under 20 um like how we can kind of make make things a little bit easier for you guys in in whatever way that might be so if definitely if there's any ideas relating to that it'd be really good to hear but just generally if you've got any kind of feedback for things that we could improve that'd be great yeah i was gonna say yeah. for the last one as well um you were saying about um cv this is like my first job and hmm. it's not like um i went to apply for others but because it's down here it's really hard to try and apply for jobs if you're under 18 especially because mm. due to GDPR, they're not allowed to take your CV in anymore. Like, uh, if you print it case. out. So uh. that's why it was so good that it was, like, the whole application thing was online as well. Because then it made, like, you got to apply for it rather than trying to find... Um, an example was I tried to apply for a job in Wilco. And if they don't have any positions online, you can't just go and hand your CV in. So... I no, that that's a really good bit of feedback for us to have. Um, yeah. And that's just, is that just if you're under 18 or is uh, it? I'm not sure, but I did it. I did it when I was about mm -hmm. 17. But since this sort of came up on an ad on Facebook, it was just so easy to apply. And yeah, it's a lot harder because you have to make sure the positions are online so you can upload your CV, sign all the mm -hmm. GDPR stuff. Okay. No, no, no that's, that's a really good bit of feedback that, yeah, um, I had had no idea about. And, uh, yeah, definitely um, shows that we need to be, uh, well, another thing for me to write down is social media things that um, <laughs> kind of Facebook ads are working and uh, we need need to make make sure that we're getting a message out even more. So, um, but yeah, no, no, great, great bit of feedback. Um, what was, uh, so, oh, yeah, so just in terms of um, then, yeah, going back to kind of like downsides and bits of um kind of not negative feedback but constructive criticisms um and things uh does anybody have anything that that they think that like suggest suggest just with you mentioning facebook ads yeah i, I found it i i applied because i saw it on the college intranet before and then i don't know if they ever like do tally up when like people get referred but i think i constantly see in so many like cardiff freshers group that any jobs for freshers any jobs for freshers any jobs for freshers and then sometimes i hear from ams asking me do you know anyone in Cardiff to do this and I think if there was I don't know how it would work but like if there was a way that just like you could target freshers groups across the country or like areas in need say like Bangor in the middle of Wales is always a bit of a tough one um I think you find that's like a lot more effective because you're literally getting 19 year olds or like 18 year olds um who move into an area they've then got a term home address um and even like six forms and stuff on internet so i applied before i was 18 and then got like held and then as soon as i was 18 yeah. on my 18th birthday i was like whizzing around getting a lot of <laughs> tickets and like crates of bud and stuff um and like all sorts of like cigarettes and whatever i've ended up in the bin because i didn't want them but um i think like that's much like more sort of like constructive sort of way to target people that are interested yeah, the, um, in the last couple of talks as well, people had uh, kind of, yeah, some really good ideas for us on, on recruitment. And I think um, one, one thing that I've learned is that we probably need to just ask our auditors how how we should be recruiting because you're probably more likely to know than than we are. Um, I like to think I'm young, but, but we're not. Um, and um, yeah, I, th I definitely think there's something in in there in terms of, yeah, kind of targeting the, the people that we need. Obviously, um, because of... Uh, um very good um laws about kind of uh advertising and, and things like and uh discrimination there's only so much that we can say about age but actually we do have a legitimate reason why we can only use 18 19 year olds for for quite a lot of our work so um that that can kind of cause us some issues so if we can kind of offset that by going direct to the people that we want but we got without kind of having specifies it at specify age that can be um really beneficial um i think the other thing on yeah kind of freshers groups is um maybe we could actually be using some of you guys to to help us with those as well because um often like you know i've i've had in my experience i've tried to join them and then as soon as i've posted it's been so obvious and that i'm not a student and it's and that i'm working for a company and they don't like that so then they report it as spam but it's you know especially now if people if that's the information that people actually really want then you know kind of how we can maybe bypass those kind of things um 
would, would be good but one and one way might just be to get actual students at these universities to be doing it and, and so then it looks a lot less dodgy um and like a pyramid scheme which uh, it can quite often quite often sound like um if we, we don't word it too too smartly um yeah, no, really, really good. It's, it's really a good, good point with that. us doing it because I banged the drum a bit about the referral bonus. Uh, mm. It wasn't that long ago. I think Frankie did like a double one, and that's when I did take a bit of like initiative with the freshers groups and probably made about one hundred and twenty pound or something, just signing uh-huh. like six people up because it was that simple. And then you can sort of give them a little bit of guidance with their first audits, just on like Messenger or something. If you've sent the link around to people. But that would sort of work if we had like, I don't know, every September was like a double referral bonus and suddenly everyone would want to tell their new flatmates about it or um, I don't know, that sort of thing. That that worked for me personally. And I didn't mind maybe losing one or two audits like near my postcode because I would get £20 then when someone signed up. Yeah, I think, that, you know, it's, it, we always do, do kind of struggle a little bit with that, that kind of tempting people to, to refer people but yeah you know, and, and we only really do want people that are, are going to do enough work to, to make it worth it as well so um it is kind of a, a fine line to um to, to cross but uh yeah definitely i think um yeah making it desirable enough <laughs> um to, for, for people to do that and and um kind of use more creative methods so rather than just tell their mates that they know live in their town if they were to post on their facebook and get um people that they you know kind of know from different areas um obviously at uni everyone's kind of coming from from all over to, to live in one city but then they all go off to these nooks and crannies of the country where we've been tra- struggling to recruit for ages so that can be um that can be a really good um uh, good time when that that those referrals really do help us out um sometimes a little bit later uh, no great feedback um, anybody else? Anything that, that they'd like to to kind of give to us as feedback, um, negative or positive, <laughs> and um, or anything? Definitely, yeah. Kind of, it doesn't have to, but if if it links to kind of youth empowerment and things like that. Um, one thing I was going to say is um, when I was growing up, I did a lot of work with um, my youth council. They were called. Okay. And um, it had over a hundred members, and like that's just for Kent. But um, there's a national one called the British Youth Council, and it brings together all the um, major county councils. And it has um, it's full of people thirteen to eighteen, but they always want to empower young people with employment. So they will always share employment opportunities. But they're also people like me who are quite serious about doing jobs. Mm. and they're quite committed um i know that if uh, i stayed on until i was 18 and i did this that it could fit around because it was quite a demanding role as well mm. also it gives um you some advertisement to the younger ones that when they go to university um or they're in employment in their local area that there is some work for them yeah no that's a that's a really interesting one um could you drop me the details about that actually um in a text at some point and um yeah, yeah. If definitely kind of so, so a discussion will be had about a referral bonus if it gets us loads of people so, so <laughs> don't worry about that um but yeah okay we'll we'll kind of have a chat maybe separately about um about how we could cook, cook any use that but yeah no, they, these are really good bits of feedback you know one thing um that i think worth, worth saying is um i mentioned it before like you know we are a very small company really um and um, that means that there's not that many ideas at any one point um, because there's a limited pool of people um, to, to provide them. Um, getting ideas from auditors is a massive benefit and probably not one that we kind of make the most of enough. Um, but again, it's part of the um, the benefit that we see of kind of ben- the benefits of being a big youth employer is that um, there's a lot of ideas, a lot of creativity and things. So um, definitely any ideas like this that you've got, if you can send them over to either your AM or um, or, or myself for those who, are, who that applies to, or or just in general, like get those get those ideas across. Because um, uh, yeah, generally we are pretty happy to to um, thank you in in, in uh, the way of a bonus of some sort as well. Um, particularly if if they pay off. Um, uh, for us so uh yeah do do kind of keep any ideas similar to that and recruitment stuff always a big one but um kind of any anything to the system and things um can also be really appreciated 
Um, did anybody else have anything to add? That point? Um, then I did uh, invite uh, Emily on partly to talk about, um, and Gabe, Gabe was as well, but I, I won't make him talk about it. Um, but um, uh, part of the reason why I invited Emily on was um, so she could say a little bit about her um, AC role, um, just um, in case anybody was kind of considering that as, as kind of a way to kind of step up with uh, with Serve Legal. So can I fire it over to you, Emily? Yeah, of course. Um, so as I said before, like my only ever job has been within Serve Legal as an auditor and then as um, an assistant coordinator like this time last year until COVID and then been re-employed. <laughs> so happy to be back. And I think it was definitely like my first taste of proper work um, because I'd never had a job before. And it's, like it was it was a massive shift, I think, from being an like being an auditor to actually being internally involved in the company, um, because I actually understood like the the severity of like not even the severity the the consequences of what we were doing. Like as so legal is a compliance company, we are enforcing the Think Twenty Five initiative, which is a major thing, and I think it really reinforced the fact that what I was doing was um, important work and was making an impact in the wider community and I think again like working for clients was a new thing as well and especially like the media compliance bit I was in and it it gave me this taste again of this like real work work life um, because I was in communication with clients on um, a weekly basis um, I don't think of something else and again like like being an auditor like it was a very flexible role so like Gabe was saying, as long as you did it by the deadlines, that was okay. So you didn't have these like fixed shifts necessarily and it, you still have quite a lot of flexibility. And I'm, I really enjoy it. It's good, it's a good little money owner. And then working from home as well is really convenient, especially because I'm at uni and it's just, it's just a lot easier than having to like go into an office, but still like working a real job, but it's part-time, which I really enjoy, so yeah. I'll just add, add on to that, like some of our ACs um, can help out with some projects. So for those of you um, who've been doing some of our um, bigger client um, like home delivery audits, then they'll be the ones kind of involved in, in getting that sorted um, and kind of can so can do some work midweek as well as just just weekends. So, um, yeah, there, are, there is quite a lot of um, opportunity and uh, yeah, we, we try and um, Probably, probably give you too much responsibility and uh, overwhelm people but uh, you know kind of really do do see um anyone kind of uh, who joins us as an ac um as a real asset and and um yeah someone who can can really um shape and build on on the business as well so um re really good um role to get into if it's something that that you'd be interested in um uh, and def definitely someone something that we're always a uh, a group that we're always looking to expand um i'll just wrap up then um unless anybody else has kind of got anything better to say um just i just wanted to add on to what what emily said like with um kind of my my experience i obviously talked about going into recruitment and um long story short i hated it so um i started looking for the jobs and um, as it happened i saw a facebook post that said legal were hiring a different area manager and you know i joined and obviously got accepted um and i'd not even done that much work really um as an auditor like i wasn't I wouldn't say I was particularly memorable as an auditor, um, but um, you know, uh, sort of legal since within two and a bit years, um, I've been able to kind of manage um, uh, the one of the AC teams and manage um, other area managers and manage projects and deal directly with clients. Now uh, doing social media, so you know, um, talked quite a lot about how you can use Serve Legal to glam up your CV and find other jobs but um, don't don't forget about Serve Legal that uh, we might have opportunities um, for you as well and um, our best recruitment pool is always our auditors so um, we really do look to to kind of um, make sure that anyone who's kind of standing out and getting involved um, we we do try and kind of offer roles to and things um, and, and kind of find, find a space for um, uh, so that we don't don't lose you so um, yeah, uh, please do. Um, yeah, kind of keep up, keep up good work. Um, uh, and just a little quick shout out as well. Um, I mentioned that this is part of Power of Youth Week. If any of you are interested in watching any of the other talks, there, there is quite a lot of interesting stuff. Um, 
kind of going on this week um, and it's all obviously done virtually so it's quite easy to just have on in the background if needed but um, yeah kind of some really interesting people talking about um, different things that, that people can get involved with so I uh, would recommend checking that out. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll leave it at that then. But thanks very much, everybody, again, for, for spending the time, uh, taking the time out of your day. And um, yeah, all the best.